right, uh, I appreciate the preaching that's been this weekend. I've enjoyed all of it and uh, enjoyed the fellowship and meeting some of you people I've never met before. I may not remember your name next time I see you, but I will remember your face. Uh, a lot of times I don't remember my own name, so if I forget your name, don't worry about it, but I remember your face. Appreciate all the food, appreciate, and thank the people that prepared it, and, and take the time to work back here, because it, it takes time to do all of this stuff. It ain't just, it takes us preachers to preach. It takes all of you people working together to put something on like this, and I, I appreciate it. If you will, turn in your Bible to two passages, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and Titus chapter 1, and I'm not going to keep you long. My, my throat just about gone anyhow. <clears throat> I, I have been talking too much, and not preaching too much, but talking too much. <laughs> there is a difference. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, and, and, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, <clears throat> begin with me in verse uh, 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Well, if, if you look around and listen to the, the scientists and the big wigs of this world, you can tell the foolishness in them. I heard, <clears throat> y'all do know the story about the whale swallowed Jonah, don't you? I listened to a scientist, a well-known scientist on TV on the History Channel, and said there was no way possible for a whale to swallow a man. Said his throat's too little. But in the book of Jonah, God prepared, you understand the word prepared? God prepared a fish. Well, they claim a whale and a fish. <laughs> well, I got news for them. God said it was a whale. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, Jesus Christ identified that fish. He said, as Jonah for three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights is 72 hours. John chapter 11, Jesus Christ said, are there not 12 hours in a day? Well, if there's 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night, there's 72 hours. Now, the world said that Jesus Christ was crucified on Friday evening and raised 6 a.m. Sunday morning. Now, I, I ain't got much money on me, but every dime I got, I'll give it to anybody in here right now that you can prove to me that there are 72 hours from Friday evening to Sunday morning. Something's wrong. You know how many hours that is? 36. Now, somebody's wrong. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. He made it that way. He gave you a Bible, a 1611 King James Bible, that you can put your faith and your confidence in and believe God means what he says. If God called that whale a fish, that's fine with me. I don't care. I think it's a fish. Regardless of what the people call it a mammal. They don't call it a fish. They call it a mammal. God said it's a fish. So I'm going to let them worry about that. It's a fish. Sir, it's a fish. It's a fish. He swims in the water. <clears throat> and I didn't come out of the water as a tadpole and lose my tail. And... <laughs> Y'all understand? <clears throat> I apologize for my throat. It just wore out like me. <clears throat> Look at the next verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. 
Now, y'all heard a lot of good preaching. He didn't say by foolish preaching. He said by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Look at Titus chapter 1. <coughs> This thing's going to get me before I get started here. In Titus chapter 1, verse 1, and Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times. You see the word times? Due <coughs> times. Manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. <coughs> Was it a commandment for the Apostle Paul to preach? Yes. Was it? Yes. Well, what was Paul <laughs> commanded to preach? You've heard it. There was a message this weekend. The gospel of Christ. Amen. The gospel of Christ. Go to Romans chapter 10. Go to Romans chapter 10 with me. <clears throat> In Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, and he did not say confess your sins, you don't put sins in the, in the verse there. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you know why he said if you'll believe that he was raised from the dead? Do you have any idea? Hold your place in and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 12. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Well, there's a lot of people were denying the resurrection. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Now watch what he said. And if Christ be not risen, then is your preaching vain? Well, Paul didn't preach vain stuff to us. He preached the truth to us. Amen. He didn't preach vain words to us. Now, he cautioned us about listening to vain words in the book of Ephesians. And your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witness of God because we testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. And then, now, here's your verse. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. You know how I know I don't have any sins? By the gospel of God. Go back to Romans 10 and take Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. God proved to me that he forgave me my sins in the person of Christ when he raised Christ from the dead. You understand? If Christ isn't, has not been raised, then I'm still yet in my sins and my preaching is vain. Why? Because I, we preach not only the death, not only the burial, but the resurrection is the proof that God forgave him of all of my sins. <clears throat> now, in verse 1, Romans 1, verse 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, Skip the parentheses, coming to verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now watch verse 4. <coughs> and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection <coughs> from the dead. Was Jesus Christ raised from the dead? Well, how are you going to be raised from the dead? You got any idea? Listen, I've done a lot of funerals. And what I look at when I think about a funeral, how are you going to get out of that box? They put you in this beautiful box. They shut the lid. They put you in a cement 
vault, put dirt on you, how you gonna get out of there? <clears throat> Let me tell you a little story about <clears throat> a grandson of mine. I think my grandson at this time was about seven or eight years old. I buried my dad in April. August, right after April, May, June, July, August, I buried my mom. My grandson, <clears throat> he's out there, and one of my friends told me what was going on after the funeral. My grandson was telling this friend of his, his cousin, he said, tell you how it is. So this is what happens. So you get old, you get sick, they take you to the hospital, yes. then they bring you out here and put you in your dirt. Now he had that thing figured out. <clears throat> but how are you going to get out of there? Have you ever thought about it? We died when he died. Now you ain't going to be able to see nothing. You ain't going to hear nothing. There ain't but one way you can get out of there. Let me show you. Go to Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> verse 6. We'll start in verse 6. <clears throat> For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can you please God in your flesh? It's been preached all weekend to you that your flesh ain't going to do it. You can tell mine ain't going to do it. <clears throat> now watch what he says, verse 9. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, you know how big that little two-letter word is, if? If so be that the Spirit of God, you see that capital S? That's the Holy Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now watch what he says here. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ by that spirit shall also quicken your born again body. No. <laughs> Did your Bible say that? No. What did it say? <laughs> your mortal body. <clears throat> That's why Paul told us in Philippians chapter 3, our conversation is in heaven, verse 20, you can look at it, verse 20. Our conversation is in heaven from whence we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. Whether we wake or sleep, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you have a way out of that grave. Amen. If you don't, you don't have a way out. You're, you're, and by the way, if you don't, you ain't going to be in there no how. You know where you're going to be? You're going to be in hell. And people don't like to talk about hell. But you you know Jesus Christ talked a whole lot about hell in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And one thing that sticks with me, what he says in the book of Mark, he says, where the worm dieth not. I used to have to help my mom on Mondays was wash day. And we had an old picture phone, and I hated wash day. Because my mama didn't rinse clothes once, she had to rinse them twice. So that water gets soapy. Take that wash bucket, sling that water out there, and I'd see these worms. That, that soap would burn them high, I reckon. I'd see these worms coming up out of that. And I used to think about that in hell where the worm died. Now, can you imagine just squirming? And, and, and just wanting one little drop of this water right here to cool your tongue and you can't get it. And out this forever and forever, for eternity. And listen, there's no age limit on death. 
My niece died at nine years old. You listening to me? Nine years old. So there's no age limit on death. Just because you younger than me don't mean that I'm going for you all. There's no age limit. So you know what you need to do? Go back to Romans chapter 10. Verse 9, Thou, thou shalt confess of thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto salvation. And unto what? Right. Righteousness. Right. Therefore with the heart man believeth unto what? Righteousness. In other words, when you trust Jesus Christ, that when he died at the cross is gone. When he died on the cross, when you trust that, God makes you just as righteous as his son is. You're equal with Jesus Christ and God the Father in Christ. Now watch what he says here. And confession is made unto salvation. He didn't say for salvation. He said unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. In other words, somebody asks you what your testimony is, you ought to just automatically say, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me, paid for all my sins, and I'll put my trust in what he did for me at Calvary. And if I go to hell, that he'll be down there with me. You understand what I'm saying? God proved to me, though, that he resurrected his son. He ain't still dead. He's alive. Amen. And you understand, when, when you read the book of Philippians, Paul said, I'm in a straight between, between having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. But it's more needful that I stay here for you. In other words, Paul had to build these people up in the faith. Your faith needs to be built up. Why? Because our faith is shallow. And don't let somebody tell you that Romans chapter 3 says faith in Christ. No, that's Satan's book. It's the faith of Christ. I'm justified by his faith. His faith. You know who justifies you? God Almighty justifies you. You know who he justifies? Well, hold Romans 10 and go back to Romans 8. I got a minute or two here. Yet. My boss is trying to come back a little bit. I appreciate whoever is out there praying for my voice out there because God's healing me. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, I'm not kidding about that. I, I figure somebody's probably praying that I can talk where well, I can understand you. <laughs> now, in, in uh, Romans chapter 8, look at verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, what well, did God deliver up his son for us? He sure did. He said he did. And I believe what God says. I don't believe what the world says about it. I believe God delivered his son up for me. How shall he not with him also freely? You say that word freely? That's something you don't earn. Something I don't earn. It's a free gift. If I come and, and, and you know, hire out to you, for wages, I'm due those wages. You understand? But if I do something for you just as a friend, I don't expect no wages, you understand? If I expect you just to you be gracious and thank me. And that's it. I don't hire out. I work for a lot of people and I don't charge my dime. I don't hire out. Now watch what he says. Verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that what? Justified. Well, beloved, I'm justified because God justified me in his son and he proved that to me when he resurrected Christ from the dead. He, he's told me, hey, if I hadn't raised Christ from the dead, your preaching would be vain and you'd still be in your sins. But Ben, I'll show you that Christ is resurrected. Your sins are gone. Your preaching is what I want done, and I want it done rightly divided according to the Apostle Paul's 
message in Romans to Philemon. Now I teach the whole Bible. But I don't teach the whole Bible into the dispensation of the grace of God. You understand? And I don't take the grace of God in Romans to Philemon and try to apply it to somebody outside the body of Christ. God don't want me to do that. That ain't the right way to handle it. Now back to Romans 10. Verse 11 again. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon him, excuse me, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, you know what? In Psalms 1, I'm not going to turn you there, but in Psalms 145, verse 18, God said, whosoever shall call upon him in truth. Those people in Acts chapter 2 had to call on him in truth. How? Believing that he was the Messiah. But you crucified him. What must we do? Repent and be baptized for remission of sin. Looking forward to salvation at the second coming. I thought about when Lynn had all them people over here in this church in Matthew chapter 16 all the stuff that they did, and not one mumbling soul of them was saved. That's right. Amen. Amen, brother. You know that? That's right. Everything they did, not one mumbling soul was saved. They had to endure to the end to be saved. I don't. Praise God for the word of atonement in Romans 5 11. Praise the Lord for it. Now, watch what he says in Romans chapter. 10 verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? Well, that's a good question. You go to a church that doesn't preach. The Word of God rightly divided doesn't preach that when Christ died at Calvary, he died for all your sins, and all you've got to do now is to trust him as Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believe, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. <coughs> Can't miss it. <clears throat> now verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they not believe? How shall they believe in him in whom they not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Well, <clears throat> what if the preacher ain't preaching the truth to you? You're what, only here. what if you believe what the preacher preaches? That man back there is a good example. Did you, when you preached in that church that you preached in, did you preach salvation by grace through faith? Did you? B before you got saved? Oh, no. When you was a Pentecostal type preacher? No. Well, could people get saved by what you were preaching? No, they can't. You got to hear the word of God rightly divided. You got to hear the message that was committed to Paul. Paul said in Titus chapter 1, this was committed unto him. This preaching was committed to Paul. And y'all have seen that Paul didn't get it from one of them twelve. He didn't get it from Jesus Christ's earthly ministry. He got it by direct revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he verified that to King Agrippa in Acts 26 verse 19. Amen. He said, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Now verse 15. I like this verse. How then shall they... <clears throat> preach except they be sent. And I challenge you, I ain't going to do it tonight, I'm, my voice is gone. I challenge you to go back and study Jeremiah chapter 23 right along here. It's these lying preachers that are not preaching the gospel of Christ. God said, I did not send them. Amen. They say, I said this and I said that when I didn't say it. And I did not send them. God didn't send a man to lie. He don't want you to be confused. 
He wants you to be built up in the faith. That was Paul's prayer for them Ephesians and them Colossians. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what the hope of his calling is. Yeah. Well, you've got to have the Spirit of God in you to bear witness with the Spirit of God. Yeah. And I've got the Spirit of God right here. God's a Spirit. Yeah. Jesus Christ said in John 6, 63, these words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. One last thing, or well, two last things, I'll lie. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And I'll get the end of me. <clears throat> Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Colossians chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 first. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is where? In Christ Jesus. He that hath the Son hath life, First John says. He that hath not the Son hath no life in him. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're sitting here lost, doomed, and damned. The last breath you take, if you're not saved, it's too late. It's just like Noah when God put Noah in the ark and shut the door. It's over with. It's Katie bar the door. I imagine there's claw marks on the side of that ark when that water started coming up. I imagine if you could find that ark, you'd see claw marks where people are trying to hang on and climb in to get in. The door shut. When the rapture of the church takes place, it's Katie bar the door. It's too late for you. The gospel of grace of God won't be preaching no more. Amen. Moses and Elijah will be preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now, one last thing, Colossians 3. Verse 3. For you are dead, <coughs> your life is hid. Where? In Christ. No, hid with Christ. Where? In God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory. Praise God for the preaching this weekend and the preaching that's yet to come. My time's up. I appreciate yours.